Hi, I'm Kinkas and I'm a Synth DIY guy. Welcome to your channel for music and sound design with modulars, Synth DIY and new technologies. If that kind of thing is your bag, please hit like and subscribe. Late last year, the legendary 4MS company sent me a box with three smaller boxes inside. Two were DIY kits and one was a factory built quad clock distributor or QCD. The kits were of the QCD's own expander and the quad pingable LFO, which is part of the same ecosystem of modules. The three together have become the main source of clocks and rhythmic LFOs in my system and are an absolute blast to use. We'll get to some cool demos of the three in action together. But first, let's check out how I built the kits, starting with the QP LFO. The quad pingable LFO is a compact, playable, four channel tap tempo, clock syncable LFO with variable skew and reset. And you can only get it as a kit now, the factory built version has been discontinued. The kit comes with all of the hardware and electronic components needed as well as the panel, the PCBs, a power cable and mounting screws. There's a very good printed manual too, make sure you follow it closely. By the way, don't detach the boards yet. The first few steps will be easier if you just keep both boards attached. I only realized that after I'd already separated mine. I like to start by organizing everything on my work area, then separating the resistors by value. I then populate all of the low-profile components such as resistors, diodes and ferrite beads and solder them on from the top side. Then I turn the board around to trim the leads and touch up the soldering. Next come the IC sockets. I like to put them in place and use the panel to hold them steady as I turn the board around to solder. Now, let's move on to the resistor arrays. Most of these are unpolarized, but the 1M bust array on the top board must go in with the dotted pin in the square hole. Check the manual for that to make sure you don't make a mistake here. Now install and solder the voltage regulators and the trim pots. Make sure the regulators match the silk screen on the PCB. Moving on to the male header pins. This time, I used both the panel and the printed manual to keep them from falling out when turning the board over to solder. These need to be super straight, so it's a good idea to solder just one pin on each header first, then check them and make any necessary adjustments before soldering the rest of the pins. If needed, you can reflow the solder on the pin while straightening it out. Just be careful not to burn your finger. Next, I installed the ferrite bead and the capacitors, making sure the big blue electrolytic caps were correctly oriented, of course. Moving on to the female headers. Now is a good time to detach the boards if you haven't already. Once again, I used the panel to keep it all together when turning it around to solder, and soldered the single pin per header first. I then actually attached the boards together and soldered the rest of the pins, thus ensuring a perfect fit. Almost done, give your work a good visual inspection before moving on. Make sure you didn't miss any joints. Now pull the boards apart and open up the hardware bag. You can prepare the parts to make this more efficient. The tabs on the potentiometers need to be broken off with pliers. Also, place two washers on each pot shaft. Check the buttons, they have markings on them to orient the correct placement. Check the manual for that. And keep the LEDs in their colored sheet until it's time to install them or you won't know which is which. Stick everything on the board and slip on the panel. Now finger tighten the nuts and solder everything up. Now just snap the boards together, check the power header for shorts and plug it in. I'll make a nice long demo with the three modules together later, but let's have a quick look at the QP LFO in action right now. Okay, so I've made a simple patch here. It looks complicated, but that's only because it's four voices, and I'll explain it very quickly. I have the output of the four channels of the quad pingable LFO going through some splitters. Each one is responsible for one voice. Each one is also both controlling the amplitude and the pitch of each of these voices. 
So the first one is the frequency central product. The second one is the baseline, the Ericosynth baseline. The third one is the Bifaco even VCOs FMing each other. And only one of them is receiving the LFO for pitch. The other one is actually only getting pitch modulation from the random voltages coming out of my 3PT over here. Three random voltages are being generated and going to three of the voices. The only voice that's not getting one is voice number four, which is my Electrosmith VCO going through the Chopping Kinky Wave folder. There's something else going through the Chopping Kinky as well. The baseline, the Ericsson's baseline, just to get that triangle wave to be a little more interesting. So uh, these are not getting any modulation as yet. And all four of those voices are going through the Bifaco Hexmix VCA, four channels of it, all four channels being controlled as well by the Quad Pingable LFO and going into four channels of my Hexmix over here. I'm using the Lich for a little bit of reverb and uh, I think that's it. So let's start by checking out each voice one at a time. So the QP LFO doesn't start until it has a tempo. The way you set a tempo is either by manually pinging with the ping button or sending it a clock. And my QCD, the quad clock distributor, is actually connected to the QP LFO from the back via a special cable so that I can send clocks to the four channels of the quad pingable LFO directly from the QCD. But we'll do that in a little bit. Let's start just by pinging. Okay, so we're gonna ping the first voice here. And there we go. And that's this guy right here, the product. I can make it a lower pitch if I want to. All right. Now the random voltages are not in action yet because they're waiting for a clock out from the QCD. Now, if I just want to stop the pinging, stop the tempo, I can press the ping button three times and hold it on the third time. So one, two, three, hold it, pinging stops, right? Of course, it's probably better to do this while it's off so that you're not hearing that weirdness with the button presses. Now notice that the LFO wave shape is relative to the tempo, right? So I've just pinged a faster tempo and now our notes are shorter. If I make a, see? I can make a pretty long note and you get much slower decay that way, right? Now let's bring this to a little bit faster. And let's hear what the different shapes sound like when I start twisting that skew knob. This is the triangle right here. Very cool. So I can just turn the channel off and then unping it if I want to. And we can move on to the next one. Right, and this is the Ericosense baseline going through a wave folder. I'm also using a fader bank here to control the amplitude of the QPLFO as it modulates the pitch there. All right? And again, sweeping this. Could apply it to the uh, folding as well, make it more interesting. But we'll keep it simple for now. All right? Turn it off. This is our third channel. This is the FM channel there, with the two Bifaco VCOs. Yep. 
Yep, 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 yep. <laughs> right. And here is the fourth voice. Which is this guy right here. Uh, and this one, I seem to have forgotten to send it the output of the QPLFO to the pitch to make it more interesting. Let me do that real quick. That's this guy over here. There you go. That's punchier, right? And again, see as I did it, as I tapped a slower tempo, we get a longer tail. But I can always bring this skew knob all the way counterclockwise and still get a very short, very short ping there. Now what I can do with this, without using any external clocking modules, is create some interesting interacting polyrhythms that don't necessarily match. All right, I can, uh, let's start just this one first. Leave it right there. Now let's do kind of a related but not synced on this one. Dun, 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 dun. Ah, 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 ah. Mm, mm. See, that's... It's gonna phase out eventually because I didn't sync them. I only synced it by hand and I'm not a metronome. Now let's try this one. This one will do pum 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 pum. Cool. And when I have them all the way to the left, and by the way, I have this calibrated so it's only unipolar voltages. So I'm mostly using it as a cycling envelope generator. More so than a really an LFO. So it's only going from 0 to 10 volts. It doesn't go negative. So this is pretty crazy right here, right? But once I synchronize it, let's tap a tempo into the quad clock distributor here. Now all of them going together. And we're getting those random voltages now. Because we're getting the tap tempo out of the QCD into the Robo 3DT. Now I can change the divisions on the on the QCD and get some really interesting effects as well. Now why don't I send some modulation to the QCD's division? You can do that by using a rampage as an LFO here. Let's make it into kind of slowish or LFOs at different tempos. Take one output to the division multiplication input here on my QCD and the other output to the other one, to another one. I can make some random voltages here with my black joystick. That seems like everybody's really short here. And I have the QCD expander so I can attenuate, attenuate that CV coming in from the rampage. we're getting different subdivisions there. Let's make it a slower tempo. We can hear those a little more clearly. There you go. And uh, let me very quickly create some random voltages with the joystick here. Black joystick is now in random mode and I'll record, quickly record some movement. 
some of these random voltages from my joystick and control the other two channels. QCD division and again this is just a little bit of fun with the QPLFO we're gonna do a fuller demo <laughs> Let's turn these down. Some may be inverted. There you go. Now we're getting some skew changes because of the tempo changes, right? But we're not changing the skews directly. We're not sending CV or turning those knobs yet, right? Make it a little faster. So there we go, there's the popcorn party going on. Now as I start turning some of these skews up, we start losing this strictly percussive aspect and things get a little more generative-y, random. Right. All the skews to the right. All the skews to the left to get rhythms again. Or we can have a mix. Some so yeah, loads of generative fun here. Here, need a faster tempo. Let's bring these divisions down though. That's so cool. Find some really interesting rhythms this way. And again, I can turn off any channels I want. I have just two going. And turn on another one whenever I want. And another one there. So, yeah, that's it for today. Stay tuned for the next video, which will be building the QCD expander and then the third video in the series and last which will be the demo of the quad clock distributor combined with the QCD expander and the quad ping of waterfall I hope you liked the video see you soon and stay noisy